Well. Hello, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today we have a beer that was sent to me by Steve in BC. This is the first, I'm pretty sure the first bottled beer from this brewery I've had. I know a few people have had other stuff by them, and it's the first beer I've had from them, really, that isn't a pale ale or something. This is from Central City, and you can see there's, like, semen stains on it here. This is their Patrick O'Pumpkin, which is a barrel-aged Imperial Pumpkin Ale. Patrick O'Pumpkin. Kind of looks like my dad. Kind of looks like my dad. Even, even the arm tattoo, you know, kind of looks like my dad. My dad kind of had that Popeye look to him. Okay, so a full-bodied spiced pumpkin ale that's been aged in bourbon barrels, producing a rich and flavorful beer. 8% alcohol by volume. Uh, I kind of wish I had people here with me to drink this, but I don't. So, whatever. Water Munich malt, pale malt, specialty malts, German magnum hops, yeast, pumpkin and spices, barrel-aged ale, imperial. Okay. So, I'm really excited to try this. Let's grab the BB Butterfly so I can save this cap and add it to the fridge. There we go. Nice little hiss. A little bit of uh, residual growth in there. Let's pour. You know, it's always impressive when you're pouring these beers in glasses that start really skinny and then get wide, because you get to, like, this point where the width just starts, and it looks like you're never going to be able to fit it all in, and then all of a sudden you can. It's just It just goes to show how, uh, how much uh, depth perception can be lost in uh, looking at some of these things by their sizes. A little bit of beer left in the bottle, we'll just give it a second to uh, fade down. But that is what I love about pumpkin beers, that's the color I love, that deep orangey red. Um, that actually, with the slightly off-white head, this actually reminds me of the first time I poured a, uh, first time I poured a pumpkin from Southern Tier. Because now it's more orangey than, than this orangey red, it doesn't have that full-on, like, uh, burnt orange slash amber look anymore, it's more orange itself, that beer. So this beer is just reminding me now of the original time I had Southern Tier's pumpkin, because I loved that so much. Um, I've only had, I think, two or three barrel-aged pumpkins, to be honest. Uh, I had one with Joe, and I think I had two with Joe. I think I had a Uinta and a Captain Lawrence. And neither of them were mind-blowing to me, I remember. Um, so I'm, I'm super, super stoked to try this, see what I get. Uh, smells. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. So, here's what I'm getting nose-wise, uh, this way. I'm getting cinnamon, I'm getting nutmeg, I'm getting allspice, I'm getting clove. I'm getting a touch of vanilla, thanks to the barrels. Thank you, barrels. A touch of uh, indescript sweetness, which would come from all those different malts. Mm, it, it smells like pumpkin pie, and that's what I love. I love pumpkin pie type of uh, type of pumpkin beers, and I think for the most part it has a lot to do with the barrel because the spices that are coming off on this would make it a little less pumpkin pie-ish and a little more overspiced, but that just that hint of fig and vanilla that are coming in from the bourbon barrels just tone down the spice a little bit. There's also there's also a very apparent ginger on there. Let's try the beer. Cheers. Ah. 
Okay. 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 I'm crying. This is good. This is very good. Um, basically, the first sip was liquid pumpkin pie, and that was to die for. Beautiful sweetness, a touch of allspice, a touch of cloves, a touch of cinnamon, a touch of ginger, uh, just that creamy mouthfeel that the pumpkin brings. Then, in came some vanilla, some like roasted malt taste, a touch of leather, and a touch of earthiness, which is the barrel taste, and then it fades to just that roastiness, that vanilla, that allspice, and a touch of the magnum hop bitterness. This is a very complex beer, and who would have thought of that as a pumpkin beer? Who would have thought there'd be a complex pumpkin beer? There's usually layers of flavor, but it doesn't usually come in waves, and this one's coming in waves. And really, I know I uh, every I, I know I talk with my hands a lot. I am really Irish. I am not Italian. Okay, okay. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. And it's 8% alcohol, and you would not know. This is a very, very dangerous beer for that reason. 8% alcohol. Uh, you know, it almost comes off as a stout. It almost comes off as a pumpkin stout. Thanks to the barrel. And I think this is where this barrel-aged pumpkin beer comes off better than some barrel-aged pumpkin beers because I think the body of the beer was already heavy enough. Uh, a lot of beers that are barrel-aged lose, a, because of the barrel, they do lose a lot of their body. They become fairly thin. I'm guessing this had a nice creamy body before it went in and then the pumpkin and the the pumpkin in it made sure that once the barrel took out a lot of that body, a lot of that creaminess, that it still had that body and creaminess. I remember one of the barrel aged ones I had was a, just a golden barrel, uh, golden pumpkin ale, so it was just a spiced pumpkin, and it was just, it was just thin and, and no thanks. And this one still has that body. This is a full bodied beer, creamy, low carbonation though, which is nice. Yeah, I love the way the pumpkin tastes. You're actually even tasting some pumpkin. Like, I love the way that that pumpkin is mixing with the allspice, the vanilla, the chai, the cloves. And usually I hate cloves, but there's just enough of cloves. And the cloves get hidden up fairly quickly in the, in the hops. Like, you get the cloves, and then the magnum hops come in and they just eat it up. Because the magnum hops just leave a slightly dirty, slightly resiny finish in the back and I know resiny usually equates to uh, like pine oil but in this case it just equates to taking over the back of the throat just sitting there but it's just a dirty earthy bitterness that eats up that clove taste the cinnamon mixes in there too I'm, I'm you get that dryness you get you get the cinnamon dry mouth and that makes you want to drink another sip so this becomes moorish thanks to the cinnamon dry mouth in there And, something you don't normally get in a, in a pumpkin beer is that little taste of fig and vanilla, which just helps round everything out. I think, um, I think a few more English hops in this so that you could taste like a, um, a pie crust, and this would be the, one of the best, if not the best, pumpkin beer I've had. Right now, it's very, very good. I would give it an 8.75 out of 10. <coughs> Excuse me. I still personally like um, Elysian's Dark of the Moon, uh, Southern Tears Warlock, and Southern Tear Pump King better. Uh, I'd say this is, you know what, I actually probably have to give this a straight 9 because I, I would put this on par with uh, Elysian's Greater Pumpkin and possibly the Night Owl, which are both very good beers as well. And I believe I gave one of them a 9 and one of them an 875. So since I can't do like an 885, eight, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to move it up to a 9. It's a 9 out of 10. It's beautiful. It's barrel aged. That's the only problem with it. Because it's barrel aged, you never know what you're going to get. Next year's could be horrible. This year's could be worse than last year's was. I mean, 
you don't know what you're going to get when you're barrel aging. Yes, they blend them and all that to try and make them the same, but once you put a beer in a barrel, everything is up in the air and you don't know what's going to come out. And this worked out great. Thank you very much, Steve, for sending it to me. Uh, Central City did an amazing job. Bye-bye, guys.